Hi, good evening. This is Mark Moore, part two of our little talk on the rocks and fossils of west of uh, Central Florida. Now, this is part two. I hope you can see part one because some of the stuff we're going to talk about tonight is a carryover from, from uh, Tuesday night. Um, first of all, we want to make sure we thank uh, the Hernando Historical Society and Gary for entertaining us here, for having us here tonight. And um, we're just going to do our best to follow this, and we'll take a couple of breaks in now and then so I can get a drink of water. Okay? All right. Okay. okay I'm trying to give him time enough to get things synced. All right. One of the little things that we talked about on Tuesday night that, uh, that, that I didn't have with me then was the piece, the Ascension Island piece. Okay, well, fortunately, the gal from England... Uh, sent me the email and she sent me the picture. I'd ask her to get me a picture. She's there now. I don't know how she did it, but she's there. And so she sent me this picture this afternoon. That's where that rock came from. And that rock is right here. Okay, this is a, this is the newest. Did we talk about this on Tuesday? Did we talk about the Ascension Island rock? The newest rock. Leslie. Leslie. Yes. Okay, well this is the newest rock. And this is uh, this is volcanic uh, island. It's about sixty some odd miles from the the uh, Atlantic Ridge, the Mid Atlantic Ridge, which is you know is where is there a uh, uh, you know where the two plates are coming together, and it's drifted in, in, a, in about a million years. It has drifted sixty two miles to the west, and that's where this rock comes from. It comes from the Ascension Island from that cliff right there. Uh, it's about a million years old. It took a million years for that rock to travel that far. So uh, I just wanted you to see that and pass it around. Some of the rocks we're going to be able to pass around. Some of them we aren't. Some of these big heavy ones, if you drop it on your foot, you'd be in the hospital getting your foot set. So we're going to work around that. Okay, now what I've got here is I've got a sh a, just a quick slide to show you. This is the first part of our history, the first part of our um, you know, the Earth's geological age. It's called the Precambrian. And that's what that is, is what that means is the Cambrian is when life first bloomed. You know, first came, we developed all of these life systems. There was life in here. There was very little, if any, life in the Hadean. That's the Hades, is from the word Hades, because the Earth was just like hell back then. It was, it was all molten, the surfaces were molten, there was a few rocks here and there, little outcroppings that became islands, and as the surface cooled, these islands got bigger and bigger and bigger, and the, um, uh, you know, the, the molten areas got smaller and smaller, and it, the, the islands would bump together and hang together, and they got bigger, and then eventually they got big enough to where they were the continents. But this is the time frame, and there, there was almost no fossils, especially in that very first part, that very first, uh, the section in this Hadean in here, the, the, the Archean, it's the second set. Now, here we start to see uh, a little bit of life starting to come along. We don't exactly know where it happened or when it happened, but we have a pretty good idea of what happened. Uh, and then we work on through. We work on through to work. By the time we get into the, uh, into the very early uh, Cambrian up there, uh, we're really getting some life. Okay? Now, here they are. Here's the samples. Here's what I want you to look at. I've got a, a, a complete section of these early, this, these are fossils of the very early life forms. And it starts out, uh, remember the oldest rock from the other night? Remember the oldest rock from the Acosta? Okay, uh, Mark, Mark Brown up in uh, the Northwest Territories, he, he mines this, he sends it out. It's very expensive because you have to come out on an airplane. You have to get it out. There's only one way in there, and that's either with a ski plane in the, in the winter or with a um, um, float plane in the summer, okay? But anyway, that's that. This, this is a fossil. This is a, a fossil with the head of a, um, a, what they call crinobacteria. It was a blue-green algae. Now this, this one is a little bit later. They first happened, it was developed in these mats. Can, can, can you show them that mat? This is a big section, this is very heavy. We're not gonna pass this around. But that, that is a mat of the chronobacteria, and that's the first thing that formed. It formed like a, um, it's sort of like a, a mat, that's what they call them, they, they're mats. 
the bacteria would grow and then it would die off and it would grow again and die off. And what happened is that this bacteria, this cryobacteria, had a sticky surface like on it. And it would trap the, um, the sediments. It would trap the sediments coming out of the mountains and stuff. And by that time we had some mountains, so we were getting sediments down into the waters. These things grew in shallow seas. And the problem is they're just like humans. They're, they're polluting themselves out of existence because these things produce oxygen and oxygen is toxic to them. Oxygen dies. So anyway, this is the head of one of the ones that we're going to see here in a minute. If you can see this little guy right here, this, um, you know, this is the head of one of these. these. Some of these are still in existence. They've, they've modified themselves and they've learned to, to cope with the oxygen. But they're generally found in the shallow seas. This is down off of Australia. This is the southern part of Australia. And this head was the millionth grandfather to one of these guys. And, and that's, that's this right here. And if you looked at, put it under a microscope, you can see this was individual little cells that were held together with, with grit. They, act, they would trap, they would trap the, uh, the bacteria, would trap the sediment, and it would mineral the min minerals in the water. Remember, there's no oxygen. It's only carbon dioxide and dissolved minerals. And then it formed this crust. Now, where we get our iron today is from is from the iron. The, the bacteria started developing oxygen. It started pumping oxygen out into the to the environment, into the ocean, principally. That oxygen combined with the iron because it was lots of free iron. Remember the chart yesterday? We showed the chart was had, had iron, a lot of iron in the up way up at the top. Well, it combined and it formed what was now the, the our iron, the big iron deposits all over the world. Uh, let's see, it's just the no. I, it'll come up in a minute. The iron place will come up in a minute. Let's just set that one back over here because that's very heavy. Uh, anyway, this is two samples. This is two different age samples of the what we call the Mar Mary Ellen Jasper. And this is nothing but cryobacteria that's undergone metamorphosis. It went down, was compressed, and formed into this stone. They bind this, they crush it, and they extract the iron out of it. The rock collectors love this. this these particular pieces from the, from the Mary Ellen mine up in Minnesota are some of the best, prettiest rocks that you're going to find. Uh, they're, they go for high dollars. I mean, a, a really nice necklace with this stuff is probably a hundred bucks or close to it. Just little pieces like this are, you know, in the tens of dollars at least. Okay, be, uh, be careful because they're both sharp. Okay, what I want to talk about here is the plates. We talked about this a little bit the other day. This is the shields. These are shields. And the shields are what they are. Is it's where the surface rock is near the surface. I mean, where there's not a lot of fill, you know, not a lot of sediment. And where there's, they're up high, they're not down, buried down in the earth, they're down underwater. And the ones we're concerned about is this Canadian shield, because that's where a lot of this comes from. And this belt is what they call a belt, that's where the plates move, that's where the land moves. So that's basically what happened. During the, this time, we had mostly wa the water is mostly liquid, the air is mostly nitrogen, the, the molten lava is turning to a crust, you know, it's becoming uh, solid. Uh, the, the little islands are forming large islands. The chronobacteria is forming mats, and this is called banded iron formations. Those are that's what it's known as. It's B B I F. Banded iron formations are forming, and the shell, shells and uh, shields and belts are forming. Okay, now we we go on to um, several more. Here is here's a couple more. These are a little a little bit later. These uh, are stromatolites also. There's another. Another very similar kind of bacteria called a, a tidalite. And, um, but these aren't. These are, uh, are still stromatolites. And they, um, they're coming along later. They're a little bit later on. If you look at that one piece that we're showing here, it's, uh, you know, it's just a section of, off of that head on that top other one. It's a, a section like that where the whole thing went under. And it didn't get a lot of sediment on top of it. So when it fossilized, <coughs> And then when the earth came back up and all the debris washed away from it, it left those, it left those colors. Those, uh, it looks like cauliflower, and, and that's what that's for. Okay, now this is called Genesis Stone. I had this last night down at the Rock Club. These are, um, this is also part of the, uh, it's part of the band and iron formation. These right in here are probably some, not, not as early as this chronobacteria, 
but some of the very earliest bacteria still trap. These things produce, actually this, this, this feels oily when you play with it. It has an oily feel to it. But turn this around like that and you can see it. Now also, um, does anybody, I brought some uh, hand, hand uh, magnifiers. So I'm going to give you less, or try, yeah. Let's take a pause. Pause just for a second. All right, this is the Genesis stone, and it's called that because for a long time, until the Acosta uh, uh, nice showed up from Canada, and, and until the um, Jack Hills uh, zircons from Australia showed up, this was thought to be the oldest, the oldest rocks on the planet. So they called it the Genesis stone. This is is layers, and you see this. This is out in Wyoming here, and this is. You can actually go right through the layers of this stuff. I mean, they, they dug right through it. And what happened is this was the mass. This, this came, actually, these bacteria came in real time before the other, before the ones with the crowns on them. Okay, but these, these particular ones that formed this were later in this genesis stuff. And you see some bands and some not bands. This band here is full of the bacteria. That is, of course, fossilized. It's gone. And these are bands of just debris that come out of the, washed out of the mountains, washed down and covered, covered the, the mats. Then it happened again, then all of a sudden you get another bacteria bloom, sort of like the red tide, bacteria bloom. The bloom dies, more, more silt comes in, covers it up. You get more bacteria and it keeps on going up and up and up. This is about 30 feet up here. And this isn't even the bottom. Some of the ones up in the Mesabi range up in Minnesota are hundreds of feet thick, all right? And then here is where these things form. This is a <coughs> this is all over the place here. This is uh, the ones we're concerned about is here up above Lake Superior, up in that Minnesota area. You know that's there's tons of that iron up there. This is this one right here is from Wyoming, and this is the same deal. Now you notice this is not red, okay? That's because this is a bit later, and it wasn't the free iron around, you know, being oxidized by the oxygen. This is just dirt. Just junk and, and the bacteria layers in here. Okay, and this is a complete difference. I can pick up a piece of the stone and I can look at it and I can tell you where it came from by looking at the different colors in it and where it, where it, you know, where it did. This is much, much newer. Okay, this is what you had, had your hand in, I think. Yeah, we sent that around. This is a piece of the, this is the crown, the, the top of that piece. And this is looking down, it's a very small piece, but that's what it looks like. This is what the bands look like. This is a mat, and there's a name for this, and I can't remember it, <laughs> but there's a name for that type. And you see how it's, it's you know, up and down and jiggle? That's because under metamorphic, metamorphosis, it, it is pressured at different points. There was different pressure. Something caused this pressure wave to go down here and push these layers down through like this. This is very nice stuff. I've been trying to get a good piece of that. This is not as good as this, but I've been trying. And also, now we're in this, we're in the Protozoic area. This is two and a half million to uh, 500,000 or so million years ago, okay? And now we're getting the first fossils, the very first fossils. Now, I have misplaced my, my real good fossil my, from that time frame, from the early time frame, from back in the Hayden. Here is the, um, here is a fossil that's very, very similar and you're going to have a hard time seeing it in this light, but right through here, is, that is the fossil. And this is, this is a, it's a, an ancestor of the creonoid. Okay? And so that's, um, that's the ancestor of the creonoid. What you find is, in the very first fossils, you find are these little disc looking things right here. I'm trying to get one of these, but they're hard, they're hard to come by. Uh, this, this is a, it's called a, 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 a cura, a cam. A-R-K-A-N-K-A-R-U-A, -A -A, an Acura. And this, they find these in Australia. Okay, these are where they get them in the fossil rock down there. This is the very, very early of what we classically consider you know, an animal. Because it came on later and they moved around. Now, if you look, if you look at this rock, and this is very difficult, you can take those, that's why I brought you those, those uh, magnifiers to look at. It's because right here, there's two arrows in this. This is a piece of, um, this is creonoids, and it's on a, um, it's a limestone fluorite matrix, okay? And these, the little dots where those errors are, if you put that under a microscope, you will see 
the little the little tiny baby creonoids in there. And that's uh, that's where they start appearing. They start appearing in sandstone fossils. But these are not sandstone. This is limestone. Jellyfish first appear, and unfortunately, where my jellyfish fossils are, I, I had them, and, but having two places and we're going back and forth, I, I tend to lose things. I, I just don't know where I put those jellyfish fossils. But I had a really nice one. And I will make it up to you all at some point. I'll put it in the museum down here for a few weeks and you guys can wander in and look at it. Okay. Uh, okay, and this is when they start, this is what's called the Cambrian explosion. Because at this point, when they, they started getting this, this life like this, similar to this at the very end of that, uh, all of the stuff began, began exploding. Life started everywhere. All of a sudden, you get all these massive amounts of fossils that are in the fossil record. Up until this point, you get up here in the, on the strata, you get up here, and there's no, uh, there's no fossils. Okay. Then all of a sudden, here, boom, there's millions of fossils. There's all kind of trilobites. There's just tons and tons of trilobites, and uh, that, that's just the same thing we just saw that. Okay, this is where we're going to look now. This is the Cambrian. This is the Cambrian area, and this is what they call the Paleozoic era right here. And it starts with this Cambrian explosion right here, and then that, that's when we start getting these guys. This is another, um, this is a Creonoid, this is a free floater, I believe. Yeah, this is the free floating Creonoids. I want you to look at that real carefully. Okay, use your mat, use your glasses and you can see it. There are little crystals down in there. Where those crystals are is where the the creonoid um, fossilized and, and formed a, like a quartz, a quartz matrix in there. Okay, and then this guy, you, everybody should know what this is. Everybody know what this is? Mm -hmm. A rock. <laughs> no, it's not a rock. This is a fossil. <laughs> There's a difference. This is a fossil. This is a trilobite. Okay, and sometimes the, yeah, it's, it's just folded up. See, you, you can see, if you look real carefully, Les will show you in a second. It's, it's got its two eyes right here. It's got, it's got its little mouth area here. And then this is its hard shell. Okay, we'll talk about, about him in a minute. But that's a trilobite. And all of a sudden, these things are everywhere. They're, about, they're the, out there in the millions. And just remember, that's, that's, this time frame is when they called it the Cambrian Explosion. Because, boom, you get all these life forms. Okay? How far back was that? That was about, in the, well, this, it, it, it this, this says it's 500 million years, well actually 500, 570 is what they, I think they quote. But here again, you know, what's a few million years amongst 500, you know? When does the oxygen start? Oxygen has already started. Right. That, that was back here, that was back here in the, in the Ar Archean. Okay, so in the middle there. So right, this oxygen starts How many in millions here. of years well, between this that? Well, this is, this is 3.5, this is 3.5 billion. A billion. Okay. So that's 3,500 million. And this is 500 million. So this is like 3 billion years. 300 million. Yeah, 3 billion. 300, 3,000 yeah. million. 3,000. Yeah, I mean, 3, 3 billion is, isn't that right? Am I right? Yeah, 3 billion is 3,000 million. Okay, and that's, that's this time frame here. So between that, that's how long it took to get or is it a yeah. life? Yeah, yeah. But there, but this is an older one. This fossil, I mean, this is a younger fossil. This fossil is probably from up in here somewhere. Yeah. Do they know why all of a sudden it exploded? They don't know. Yeah. They, they don't know why. Yeah. They just call it the Cambrian explosion. That's what I'm wondering about the oxygen. Being well, the oxygen part, was there, or otherwise yeah. the life forms would not mm -hmm. have. Well, maybe it, that it had something to do with yeah. that time it took. For well, the oxygen to affect it, it, it not 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 exactly because all of a sudden you you cross this border and then here you've got very little fossilite other than the stromatolites tromatolite tr uh, there's three or four in there like that like stromatolites it's it's the the the, uh, the blue green I call it blue green algae because I'm an old school guy now they call it cyanobacteria okay but I'm going to keep calling it blue green algae because I just forget that it's now called uh, cyanobacteria but but, but that lasted, you know, way up into here. That lasted several hundred million years, because in that time frame, the carbon dioxide levels went down, right, and the oxygen levels went right. up. And and when that happened in here, the 
uh, stromatolites started disappearing. Right. They're gone. You have a few, right. but, but by and large, the big masses that covered the earth are gone. So right. basically, the, the stromatolites are caused oxygen. Caused the oxygen, this that's right. World. That's, that's, that's what happened. Created the oxygen. It created the oxygen, <laughs> yeah. yes, because there's no other, nothing else can happen. And then they kept being fed. The reason they all didn't die out is because there was a lot of volcanic activity. What does the volcano spew out, among other things? Carbon dioxide. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's the system, and it takes a lot of study to try to understand this. Okay. It, it's 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 yeah. not it's not really it, it's not really apparent. Yeah. It's not straight right. out. But all you have to remember is basically here at the Cambrian in, in the Cambrian time frame. This, this stuff just exploded. The life just, the, uh, everything went, just went everywhere. And now, what else came along? <clears throat> Everybody know what this is? What is this? Shell. No, it's not just a shell. I know. No. I couldn't think what, what do you think? No. What's it called? Mollus. Okay, so we got one person that got it. Is it ammonite? It's called an ammonite. ammonite. Okay, now I've got There's several ammonite. ammonites here because I wanted you to see the difference in the fossils. This is a true fossil, a true form fossil. That's what it's called. As we move on down through these, this will this will see why I'm showing you this. Does that come from Canada? Uh, this one comes from uh, no. This one comes from. <coughs> At that point, they were everywhere. Though. Yeah, at that point, they were everywhere in all the seas. It, this one, I believe, this one came from. Uh, these came from Morocco. Okay. <laughs> I know where these guys came from because this is a true form fossil, and this is a cast fossil. Okay, the little critter that this thing he filled up, he filled up with um, limestone or with chemicals, different kind of minerals, and then his shell went away. His shell deteriorated and went away and left this. We're going to talk about the different forms in just a minute. But this, uh, this, this, this is, and this is a true form fossil because that's actually the body. That's not the shell. The fossil itself, the organic material inside, just fossilized. To, yeah, fossilized. It accepted minerals and it was replaced by the minerals. Wow. Okay, and here we talk about the tr trilobites. There are over 10,000 different trilobite fossils. Okay, I found that hard to believe. And then I started looking at the literature. And sure enough, the literature is full of different, ever, there's little, all kind of little idiosyncrasies, things that you wouldn't even think about that, that, that makes the different differentiation. Okay, and what is its relationship? What is, what is its descendant? The horseshoe crab. And boy, is that a dumb thing. Thing. Yeah, she Leslie used to have. <laughs> well, she was at the There's Smithsonian, them, and her right? boss and her would have to go out, and they went over to um, Delaware to to pick up uh, samples, you know, marine samples. She was in malacology yeah. at yeah. the Smithsonian, yeah. and uh, they'd go over there and pick them. And um, no. No. the horseshoe crabs would be <laughs> there in the in that uh, bay. I forget the name of the bay. It's right Delaware there. Delaware Bay. Is it Delaware Bay? Yeah, no. They, they would be there by the thousands. These horseshoe crabs would be coming, washing up, and I'm having fun because I'm just going along for the ride. I don't, I'm just a freebie. Yeah. They milk them. You know, you, you seen, were you there at the last where they milk them? What's that? Where they milk them? I guess she has been on Well, they take a, they, they'll get about a quart of fluid from about a dozen of them. Yeah. And it has a product called luminous lysate, which is used in medical labs for detecting bacteria. It's actually a a purple fluid, and it's one of the most expensive byproducts in the ocean. Okay. Now, how do, that do you know that that, that fossil? That's pretty cool. How do you know that 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 uh, the little fossil, the little guy, the uh, this one? trilobite? No, not that one. Who's got the trilobite? Trilobite's back in the box. Okay. How do we know that that is a fossil, a fossilized trilobite? Because most of the fossils are not, not real trilobites. The, fo the trilobite molted. It's just like a snake, it came out of its shell, it came out of its skin, and it was very vulnerable when it first did that because it was very soft. Okay, but then well, um, crabs and crabs and crabs and dolphins that. do the same thing. Okay, yeah. but um, but what you're seeing in these fossils is actually the the molted skin, the shell, okay, especially the ones that are laid out like this. That's not the, the real scroll, but the, the reason I know that one is because that one is curled up and it still has some of the parts there. Some of the, the head parts. Okay. 
Okay, now we talk about the Permian extin extinction. That's one of the biggies. Uh, we, we have a slide here in a minute, I think, that shows you the, the five major extinction levels, and that's one of them. Okay, but this is the Permian extinction, and this is in this thing. Uh, well, we'll talk about we'll talk about all the extinctions together here in a few minutes when I pull the slide up. Uh, these are these are some of the Hell's Creek formations. These are the 66 million years ago was the end of the Cretaceous and the beginning of the Tertiary. Now, what happened? Did we talk about on Tuesday what happened at the KT? All the dots. Okay. And they believe that that was a, 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 a meteorite. There's, there's several meteoroid, I guess, or a meteor. There's actually several different theories, but the best one is that a meteor hit in the Yucatan, just off the Yucatan in what's now the Gulf of Mexico, and spread around. And the, the little thing I had here, and I don't know if I brought it back or not. It doesn't look like I did. The little sample from Spain, where, is, where you have the KT, where you have the, the iridium. Remember we talked about iridium? Okay, well, where that was spread all around the cross of the earth, I've got a couple of rocks that have, the bottom half of the rock has no iridium, and the top half of the rock has got iridium in it. And that's, that is where this end, that's the end of that. These are from Mason Creek, Maison, I'm not pronouncing it right. Okay, be careful, see how this thing comes apart? And then this one is from, um, this is the other one. This is from uh, Hell's Creek. Okay. And this is this is sometime before the the uh, extinction. This is in this time frame. This the Mason Creek was Mason. Mason. I can't pronounce it right. Mason Creek formation is about 300 million years, and this this other one, the Hell's Creek, is only 66 million years. Okay, but I want, as these fossils come around, I want you to look and see if you can tell me the difference. Tell me, if I didn't tell you which one was which, could you pick the oldest one? Remember, there's 300 million years difference between those two fossils. Okay, and it's, it's not, you can't hardly tell the difference. Okay, and here we have a megalodon. This is from the Miocene. Where's that guy? I don't know. Where do you, where do you go? Where's it? I don't know. That was a short pause for a minute. Okay, yeah, let's take a short break, Gary. Is that a